This week at Starbase, while High Bay and Star Factory demolition continues at the build site, construction continues on Ship 38, crews are still hard at work on the tank farm expansion, and the launch mount for Pad B gets relocated to the launch site. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week in the early hours of Friday morning, demolition crews were busy continuing the dismantling of some of the obsolete build site infrastructure. First, another section of the triangular end section of Star Factory was toppled. Then about an hour later, a crane was spotted lowering another high bay wall section to the ground. Later that morning, a clamp arm for the new Pad B launch mount rolled by a rover camera before turning around and coming back by on its way to the Sanchez site for installation. A new vaporizer was delivered to the launch site a short time later. If this is a replacement for the one recently removed, it sure does look shorter. This is likely an effort to mitigate the damage seen in the previous launches. Shortly before noon, Ship 35 moved across the Massey outpost and back onto Highway 4 for its return to the build site. Following its problematic static fire last week, the Flight 9 Starship will likely need another trip to Massey's following some work in Mega Bay 2. By mid-afternoon, the rocket had completed its journey to the build site and was back inside Mega Bay 2 and hooked up to one of the building's bridge cranes for its lift to a work stand. Unfortunately, the door was closed before we got to see it lifted. In the early hours of Saturday morning, another section of high bay wall was lowered to the ground in front of the building for scrapping. Work continued overnight and into the morning down the road at the tank farm expansion. A cryogenic pipe manifold was lifted into position by the methane subcoolers and later, the motor was lifted and installed on the liquid oxygen pump in the sixth slot. Also that morning, the guard shack at the main build site gate was picked up and moved closer to Highway 4, aligning it with the temporary fencing separating the demolition area from the road. On Sunday morning, a new continuous flight auger drill rig was delivered to the launch complex. This is the second of these to arrive recently, indicating another phase of structural piles are in store at the site. That evening, SpaceX's large crawler crane at the launch site was spotted repositioning near Pad B as the build-out of the new infrastructure continues at a rapid pace. Monday morning saw deliveries of truckloads of steel covers for the new commodities trench for the second Stage Zero. And later that morning, demolition of the triangular end section of the Star Factory continued as an excavator worked to remove additional window sections from the final remaining corner of this part of the building. That afternoon, two truckloads of rigging were seen leaving the launch complex and heading towards the Sanchez site, possibly for fitting of the new launch mount prior to its rollout to the pad. Meanwhile, grading work was underway across the road from the launch complex. Crews were bringing the dirt parking area along the wetland side of the road up to the same height as the road itself to enable a safe and even pathway for the upcoming wide load. Meanwhile, the chopsticks over at Pad B began climbing the tower. The arms were raised all the way up to the top of the tower where they were left in the open position, likely just to have them out of the way for the work down below. About an hour later, the SpaceX crane was moved closer to the Pad B flame trench possibly in anticipation of the upcoming arrival of the new launch mount. And early on Tuesday, an excavator once again could be seen pulling down windows from the end of Star Factory. This time, the work shifted to the Highway 4 side of the building, and by late morning, work on those windows appeared complete. Down the road, crews removed the temporary fencing from the D2 gate at the launch complex, clearing the way for the arrival of the new launch mount. Around that same time, the recently delivered pile drilling rig was moved over towards the Pad B side of the complex to get ready to work. The morning saw a slew of activity at the tank farm expansion, including the installation of another liquid oxygen pump, the delivery of a new methane pump, and also the installation of a methane sump and pump. A truck arrived carrying a full load of rebar cages for installation in the new piles to be drilled in the near future. The afternoon saw another flurry of activities at the Pad B pump farm as multiple sumps and pumps were lifted and installed and another pump was delivered to the site. Up the road at the Sanchez site, crews worked to remove some of the scaffolding from around the Pad B launch mount as its rollout draws near. Late that afternoon, the Pad A chopsticks began moving up the launch tower. The arms were eventually raised about halfway to the ship quick disconnect arm level before being lowered back to the stop. Around 10 o'clock that night, the time was finally at hand. The Pad B launch mount was moved out of the Sanchez site and onto Highway 4. The hardware was then brought down the road to the launch complex. 
Once there, it was taken into the site and staged near the waiting SpaceX crane over by Pad B. Shortly after midnight on Wednesday morning, as work continued on the demolition of the Star Factory building, a small fire appeared to break out. Crews quickly had it under control and got back to work, removing the final section of cladding. After sunrise, several more methane pumps were lifted and installed at the tank farm expansion. And a few hours later, an interesting piece of steel arrived at the launch complex. It appears it was delivered to the wrong site, however, as it headed back towards the build site a short time later. If you think you know what it is, let us know what you think in the comments below. Another section of High Bay was cut free and lowered to the ground as the build site continues to shrink at a steady pace. A little later, a new barrel section emerged from Star Factory, was picked up by a crane and taken to the scrap yard at the Sanchez site. Of note, this section appears to have a redesigned ship quick disconnect interface, as well as some other hardware attached on both sides of the interface, possibly indicating that this was a pathfinder for on-orbit propellant transfers. That afternoon, a single ring section was also brought out of Star Factory and taken to the scrap yard. And back at the launch site, another methane pump was lifted and installed in the tank farm. That evening and into the night, the Buckner crawler crane began moving across the launch complex, making its way over to Pad B for the upcoming lift to the new launch mount. In the early hours of Thursday morning, the newly arrived piling rig was spotted working on the far side of the Deluge farm from Rover 2's perspective. And later that morning, Ship 38's common dome section was brought out of Star Factory and taken into Mega Bay 2 for stacking with the waiting nose cone and payload section. Around that same time, another load of rebar was delivered to the launch site for use in the new piles being drilled there. High Bay demolition continued on Thursday with yet another section of the building being removed and lowered to the ground for scrapping. This week, we also saw the posting of both notices to airmen and notices to mariners as SpaceX prepares for the upcoming Flight 9. While these are still all preliminary, it shows that SpaceX is currently aiming for a launch in the second half of this month. Switching over to Florida, on Tuesday, the MN Calibri arrived at Port Canaveral carrying the Umistat MTGS-1 satellite. This geostationary weather satellite is currently slated to launch in July on a Falcon 9 after the company switched to the SpaceX launch vehicle from an Ariane 6 for undisclosed reasons. This week was also a busy one for Starlink missions. Booster 1094 from the Starlink Group 12-10 launch finished dockside processing on Tuesday. On Saturday, Booster 1080 and fairing halves 152 and 188 returned from the Starlink Group 6-75 mission and were processed and returned to Roberts Road on Wednesday. The Starlink Group 6-84 mission launched from Launch Complex 39A atop Booster 1078 on Sunday, with the rocket and both fairing halves being brought back to the port on Monday and Tuesday. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.